Cancel culture. Scroll through social media and someone is asking for somebody or something to be canceled. There have been calls to cancel celebrities, brands, sports teams, and even a popular Broadway musical, but what does it actually mean to be canceled? For the answer, I tapped writer Alex Blinn, who has written for Billboard, Paper, and Out magazines, and he knows a thing or two about celebrity culture, as well as pop culture expert Stephanie Simon, who has covered culture at New York One for over two decades. Cancel culture uh, relates to a person, place, or thing that is being for lack of a better word, boycotted for something derogatory that they have either said or sent out or portrayed in the past, usually to minority groups. When you think about how often young people are on social media and how important it is to them and how it gives them a voice. And so part of this is about how they're able to use their power and it's new and perhaps it's untested for them. This is their chance to wield some power in the world. It's to follow and unfollow people. Canceling happens in a whirlwind way, often beginning with a tweet that ends up circulating virally. With no warning and no arbiter, someone can come under fire for something they shared or did that people find controversial or problematic. And that action could have occurred recently or 20 years ago. Alex says it's actually changing the way he does his job. As a person who works in the media, I have been having more conversations with publicists than I ever have before. I would say that the teams around these people are more targeted with who they'll speak to. I sense the nervousness when they talk to me. I think everyone's a little freaked out. It's one thing to be freaked out about saying something stupid during an interview. It's a whole other thing to have a history of making harmful or racist comments. Most would agree that should have consequences. That's what happened to three major YouTube celebrities, Shane Dawson, Jeffree Star, and Jenna Marbles, who recently ended up canceled. Jeffree Star has had many racist tweets, posts, DMs. Many have been resurfaced by many different people he's spoken to. And then Shane Dawson also has some questionable, fairly racist stuff in his back catalog of YouTube videos, and then Jenna Marbles likewise. I wanted to talk to those YouTubers about what happened, but I never heard back. But Jenna Marbles did post a video to her channel apologizing to her followers. She said she's leaving YouTube for the time being. So it's safe to say there's a lot of power behind an even moderately successful cancel campaign. And brands aren't getting a pass either. Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben's have had problematic food mascot imagery for decades, but cancel campaigns helped to finally change their packaging. Doug Melville knows a lot about brands and inclusion. He's the chief diversity officer at TBWA. That's a global advertising agency whose creative partners include PepsiCo, which is the parent company of Aunt Jemima. Most famously, Aunt Jemima uh, changed their brand and they came out with an announcement that they were no longer going to use the image of Aunt Jemima on their product and they were going to change and rebrand that. And quickly after that, Uncle Ben, uh, Eskimo Pie, Rastis, who is the, the, the individual who's on the cream of wheat, uh, Mrs. Butterworth, all within five days of that one decision, all then made similar announcements. And Lando Lakes as well with the butter and the packaging um, with the Native American woman. When it comes to brands, it seems like cancel culture has been less about deplatforming and more about enacting change. Although some people had thought that those brands were fine and that this is just a politically correct move, the reality of the situation is the moment we are right now in society is that underrepresented voices are getting an equal say in the conversations. We reached out to PepsiCo and they sent us this statement. PepsiCo Inc. will remove the image of Aunt Jemima from its packaging and change the name of the brand. Packaging changes without the Aunt Jemima image will begin to appear throughout quarter four of 2020. The name change will be announced at a later date and will quickly follow the first phase of packaging changes. When someone says something racist or if a brand is using offensive mascots or slogans by appropriating another culture or heritage, asking them to stop seems reasonable, even necessary, right? But what if it's not so clear cut? What if the nature of the offense is more subtle and harder to define? Can cancel culture go too far in those cases? 
Other word got around They said this kid is insane man Took up a collection just to send him to the mainland Should a successful Broadway show featuring a cast of people of color in an industry lacking diversity be canceled because it includes George Washington and Thomas Jefferson who were slave owners? Lin-Manuel Miranda's Hamilton was the subject of a cancel campaign. Miranda's response to all of this was, all the criticisms are valid. The sheer tonnage of complexities and failings of these people I couldn't get. Dasha Polanco, who you may recognize from Orange is the New Black, is in Miranda's newest film, In the Heights. I understand that this is a very sensitive time of where there's a lot of things being uncovered and very necessary, but we also have to do our research find out what is it that we're really doing. Are we just jumping on everything to cancel everything because it's like a thing or are we really making moves so that the canceling is about canceling and now shifting the narrative? She has an interesting point. But no one else is in the room where it happens. Could Miranda have written Hamilton differently or even not at all and written his own cultural history instead? Sure. Would it have cleared all the hurdles and become a global success? Maybe not. Was Limano's Miranda intention to glorify? No, but it's part of our story. Did it give the opportunity to many people of color like us? Yes, it did. And until we start saying our stories, until we start having writers, until we start having this conversation, until we have people like Lynn creating these jobs for us, we're gonna continue to fall into the same statistics that has existed for X amount of time where Hollywood will be told by one narrative, one person, and that's all. If accountability is the main purpose of cancel culture, why is it often sprinkled with hopes of deplatforming and removing people from the conversation? I recently saw people using the hashtag cancel cancel culture on Twitter. That is a rabbit hole I cannot recommend that you go down. It's full of trolls and questionable memes. That being said, the idea of changing cancel culture for the better is a real hope for some internet celebrities. Victoria Annunziato has more than 4 million followers on TikTok and wrote a song about the potential harmfulness of cancel culture. The video currently has more than a million views. Tell me that I'm sensitive, you think we'll never eat it cause we do. We're too busy wondering if it's true. I kind of think it developed into the general acceptance of pretty much humiliation, shaming, and cyberbullying, really. They can lose friends, they can lose followers, they can lose relationships, they lose money, they receive death threats, they basically have their career destroyed. She implores social media users to think about changing the narrative, to consider keeping celebrities accountable without trying to destroy their careers. If it were to transition into something like accountability culture, great. I think people would really support that and follow that. If we all were to sit down, we would probably end the conversation realizing that we agree with each other and that we have more in common than we think we do. When it's injected on, into social media where you maybe only get half the information and then you take people that maybe don't do research for themselves and then take everything from face value as the truth, you get miscommunication and misunderstandings. So why has cancel culture become so prevalent? Culture shift educator and psychiatrist Dr. Janet Taylor says that the people behind most of these cancellations are finding a way to have a voice. I applaud what young people are doing in the sense of realizing their power and can find things that people should apologize for or should be held accountable. But at the same time, instead of saying, you know, Twitter go to work, let's, you know, take away their job, let's maybe have a different forum to understand what the issue is and then to maybe even, I don't know, do some polls or something about what should happen. She also says there's probably a better way. Sometimes it overreaches because we lose the ability to understand that at different points in our lives we may have grown and certainly moved on from something that we did. But should people be held accountable? There's no question. Can we find a way to do it that doesn't just totally make people lose what they work for or erase them? I think we have to work towards that. As cancelers drive more and more people from their platforms, you have to wonder, can you be uncanceled? I think internet celebrities can come back from being canceled if they handle it correctly the way 
all celebrities come back after going through controversial situations. Sometimes it means taking a break, taking yourself out of the limelight for a little while. Sometimes it means showing contrition, admitting you did something wrong. And maybe at the end of the day, it's less about canceling someone forever and more about holding them accountable with the possibility in time of forgiveness and redemption. I know how angry we are. I know that we've had it on our limitations. I, I could understand that that's it, no more. But I, I cannot sit here and be part of um, putting someone down because they did not know, because um, they made a mistake, because there's room for learning and educating ourselves and learning how we can coexist. Let's see what Twitter thinks about that.